Welcome viewers. A quick recap for those who don't know somehow, and yet are still watching this video, the Kingdom Rush series is a very popular fantasy based tower defense series <laughs> made by Ironhide Games. And I have enjoyed all of them so far, and I am very excited for the newest game coming out in a couple of days as of me recording this. But for my second video in this series that I'm doing, I'm obviously going to the second game that was produced, Kingdom Rush Frontiers. And I'm trying to see which hero can make it the farthest without any help. The first obvious difference I need to mention is that starting from this game, heroes level up and keep their levels outside of battle. So I'm using my old file with all of my level 10 heroes so that they can be at maximum power. This means that they have a higher power level to start with than the heroes from the first game, but the starting levels in Frontiers and all of the games going forward are also much more difficult than the first game, with even their peon level units being much stronger than goblins. The next thing I'm changing is the video format where I'm just making these a lot shorter because the first video got a little bit out of hand and I'm doing this by going through the levels instead of giving each specific hero a spotlight I'll basically just talk about the heroes on the ends so sorry if your favorite hero doesn't get mentioned but for this particular challenge they just didn't stand out one way or another I will start by talking about the first hero Ulrich because he was an interesting case so the game had it encoded to where it played through a scripted scene where it waited waves to let me have reinforcements and my other powers and it didn't let me have access to my hero Ulrich until wave 4 and so I had already lost 11 lives by that point and I was only able and I was only able to survive because the stage gave you two towers that you can't sell anyway but with the help of his damage dealing powers, as well as his three sand golem-like minions that he summons, he was able to defeat the level, even with that handicap. But the moment I chose a different hero, I was allowed to bring them along at the beginning of the level, so this was just with Ulrich, so the way that was coded only applied to the first hero. So just like the first game, every hero beat the first level by themselves, well, with two archer towers, but I couldn't help having those. And also, most of the heroes defeated the level without losing any lives, so the standouts for this level are actually the low performers. I actually like Mirage, even though she gets a lot of flack, but yeah, she had trouble keeping up with some of the enemies and let some of them pass. Surprisingly, Shatra lost a life while doing it, because I usually, I typically think of him as like one of the better heroes, but it was just hard for him to keep up, especially since he doesn't have a reliable long range attack. I'm going to be honest, I don't like Ashbite. Just for whatever reason, he's just too inconsistent for me, even though people will constantly rank him pretty high on these tier lists that I see. But yeah, he lost more lives than Shatra and Mirage because he would just let enemies pass, even though I know for a fact that he could have killed them. And if you know the heroes, then it's probably no surprise to hear that the worst one was Deirdre. Now, the reason for this, bless her heart, is because she's a full-on support slash cleric type character so her abilities can heal allies that are nearby she can improve towers which actually did technically help in this battle because there were built-in towers that i didn't build but yeah she just did not have enough damage output to keep up but she was still able to beat the level like i said because everyone beat the level and since so many of the heroes did well i had a hard time predicting who would beat level two and who would do well i mean i figured that boneheart would because he just has a massive damage output and his plague breath is an ability that can clear a line of enemies but i guess i'll just see so it turns out that none of the heroes could beat level two <laughs> so as you might have expected, Deirdre did the worst, by far. Um, she only got to wave 3. You know, she did her best. Like, she can teleport, she has a ranged attack, but she does so little damage that it just does not matter. Um, and then most everyone was like the same level of mid. I mean, I could go through, but like, the um, the people who struggled on level 1, that was no indicator for them doing badly. In fact, Shatra was actually one of the best. Like, Shatra, Nivis, and Kaz. Kaz? Kaz? I don't know. I mean, like, he's a minotaur, right? So, like, why is his name, like, Taurus or something like that? 
kind of a dumb name. But anyway, those three were the only ones to make it to wave six. And the only one who did better than them is, as I guess, Boneheart made it to wave eight, which was the very last wave. But yeah, there's there was no indication from level one who would do better than level two, and that's because basically everyone did the same, except Boneheart was the only one who did a significant amount better, and Deirdre was the only one who did a significant amount worse. So I guess that section was pretty short, except I lied because Bruxa beat level two and she was the only one. So her damage output is just crazy. She has all of these skulls who attack all at once, so multiple attacks that all do, I mean, let's just say average damage for a hero, which means that she's doing five times the damage. She has this voodoo like needle in the doll attack that does a lot of damage for enemies of the same type and enemies of the same type usually attack a lot on the same wave so that's really helpful and enemies nearby slow down and like her skulls attack autonomously while she's moving too so it's not a huge drawback to have her move up because she continues to attack yeah so brooks is just awesome outdid Boneheart as well. And then on stage 3, she also rocked it. There are 10 waves in stage 3 and she made it to wave 9. It just got a little bit too much just because there are two different pathways and they lead in at one choke point, but that choke point is right at the end of the level. So it just didn't give her enough opportunity to help clean up. And it helps that she's a magic attacker because the only magic resistor are the, I think they're called war wolves. I don't know, I could look it up, but I'm lazy. But then there are a lot of units that have physical resistances, especially immortals, which would basically be impossible to kill without magic. And then it's just annoying to deal with light armor when they pile up. So yeah, Bruxa was awesome. And I wanted to see if any of the heroes could beat stage two if I set to easy difficulty because I did all these levels on veteran difficulty, and Boneheart was able to beat level two on easy difficulty. But neither Boneheart nor Bruxa were able to beat stage three on easy. They both got to basically the end. They got to wave 10, the last wave of stage three, but they just weren't able to get that last little bit. But it makes it very clear that Bruxa and Boneheart are a clear head above the rest of the heroes, at least in terms of solitary damage output. As you can see, I still have the leftovers from my last video, um, which is why I'm doing this section on this video, even though I don't think it'll be nearly as interesting. So yeah, I just put all the heroes here <laughs> in the placeholder. Obviously, Brooks is the GOAT, and I mean, I think just because I had to go on easy difficulty automatically makes Boneheart go down a tier, <laughs> even though they're very close. Like the red, like just all the rest of you, all the rest of you, I just don't care. I just don't care. Um, ah, get get him away. Get him out of that. <laughs> Nivis is not almost the goat. Um, I, I don't care what order they're in. That does not matter to me. And then um, get get her off the battlefield. <laughs> she's not she's not meant to be there. She's supposed to be in a church. Um, <laughs> So yeah, this is a very, this is my very fair and balanced tier list that takes everything into account. So yeah, I hope that y'all gained some enjoyment from this. It's probably better that I made this video much shorter. And if you've stuck around this long or if you care, so my next video in the work is a Pokemon video. It's a, a Pokemon, based on a Pokemon fan game, it's a challenge in Poke Rogue. if anybody of y'all have heard of that before, but it's a really fun game that I'm addicted to, and I did a fun challenge in it. And then, at some point, at some point, I will do the evil campaign in Battle for, Mi for Middle Earth 1. <laughs> but it is, it's taken, it took so much out of me to do the good campaign just from my computer troubles and everything. But I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time, viewers.